In this lesson, we'll learn how to use cylindrical mapping as a method for beginning to lay out our UVs. All right, great. So what I've got in this scene, very simple scene, again, with a simple sphere, and this time we got a simple cylinder. Now, neither one of these objects uh, appear to have UVs, or at least there's no, a te no texture assigned to them. So let's check it out really quick. Let me come over here, and you can see if I select both of these. That is true that neither one of them have any kind of UVs that have been created. So um, at this point, let's go ahead and start with the sphere here. And we'll just kind of zoom in in the perspective viewport on that. I'll come up here to create UVs, and instead of planar mapping, let's go ahead and look at the options for cylindrical mapping. So as you can see here, there's really not many options for that. Um, you can see that really all we have is this insert projection before deformers, which by default is turned on. And that's actually pretty important if you are planning on animating your geometry um, and deforming it based on that animation. Um, this will insert the projection before any of those deformers take place. So um, rather than spend time here, let's go ahead and just project this. And what you can see here is that we now have a texture that is appearing on the sphere itself. Now, if we look at the projection manipulator, you'll notice here that what I've got is kind of a half cylinder. You can see that it kind of starts and it stops, but it doesn't go all the way around. Now, if we come in here and look in the UV texture editor, you'll see here that the uh, UVs that have been created far exceed the zero to one space. Now, what we need to do whenever we're using a cylindrical projection like this is we need to first close the cylinder. So um, if I come over here and grab this little red handle, what I can do is I can just start to drag that. And I'm basically closing the cylinder off. So if we drag that over to here, you can see it kind of snaps together with its buddy there on the other side. And now after doing that, you'll see here in the UV texture editor, our UVs fit much closer to that zero to one space. Now, in looking at this, again, we have some other controls, so let me just spread those out for right now. And by the way, when you do create a cylindrical projection like this, when these two things come together, this is where your seam is gonna be created. Remember in the very first lesson, we talked about uh, basically how you have to cut the geometry. That cut is referred to as a seam, and that's basically where one edge, right, like this guy over here, touches another one. So let's see if we can maybe find that seam. If I were to simply come over and switch to maybe edge selection, and we could come over here and click along these guys right here. You can see those guys are highlighting right along here, right where that uh, those two handles came together. Now in the UV texture editor, you can see as I selected those four edges, these four on the other side basically highlighted as well. That's where the other half of that seam is. It's over here on the other side of that zero to one space. All right, great. Let me come back over here and we'll go ahead and grab our poly cylinder projection again, just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and spread that sphere apart here because, again, we have kind of some of the same handles as we had before. Uh, we can come in here and we can grab this guy in the middle and we can start to stretch that. You can see how the UVs are reacting to that. Uh, we can come in here and we can start to scale that cylindrical projection. So you can see if we wanted it larger, just exactly the same as before. So um, now we also, let me just close this guy back up. We also have this red T shape, and again, it's in this case, it's right here. So um, again, this is going to serve the same purpose. If we click on that guy, you'll see that our projection manipulator changes a bit here. And again, we have the option to pull these arrows, and we can start to shift the projection. In this case, I'm sliding the cylinder up and down uh, around the sphere. Uh, if we wanted to come over here, we could do something sort of like that. And you can, again, see how the UVs are reacting. Um, so in this case, if we were using a cylindrical projection, we probably want that cylinder to be pretty darn close to the center of that sphere. So uh, again, we've got the ring. We can change the rotation of the projection if we wanted to rotate it off the axes it is on. So you can come in and do that, and you can see how that is sort of manipulating the uh, projection as well. All right, great.
So now let's look, take a look at this. Let me just click away. I'm just going to leave it right where it's at. And in terms of the UV layout, um, the texture looks okay on the sides. It looks Actually, it's a little distorted on the sides here. You can see it's stretched uh, sideways. As we get up here, it's a little bit better, but up here, it is really messed up. So you can see here our UVs and the texture that is being displayed to us based on those is kind of a hot mess. So again, this is not a cylindrical shaped object. It's a sphere. So let's come over here to our cylinder and let's try and do the same thing. So uh, we'll just simply come over here and again, create UVs cylindrical mapping. You can see here we've dropped on that cylinder. It's actually pretty darn close to the geometry itself. So if we wanted to scale that up, we could. Sort of like so. But you can see as of right now, based on the projection, we're getting a pretty clean texture here. Very little uh, very little stretching or distortion. And I want to scale that up a bit just so we can get our UVs kind of back in that zero to one space. Maybe to right about there. Uh, and I'm actually going to grab this handle here. I'm going to stretch it up just a bit so our squares look a little bit more like squares and not so much like rectangles. So we can come over here. Go ahead and close this guy off. And again, we can come in and start to stretch those guys out. Now, being that this is a checker map that we're using to basically preview our texture, um, the closer to a square we are, the closer to no distortion or no stretching uh, that we are as well. So if we wanted to scale that guy up to sort of like that, that's pretty close to a square. Now again, just as with the sphere on the top, we've got another issue entirely here because this top of this cylinder is, again, it's a hot mess. So um, we would need to manipulate these UVs. Remember, these projections that I'm showing you, these aren't necessarily meant to be a one-click solution for creating your Vs, or your UVs rather. Uh, they're Really, they're meant to be a starting point. So in this case, we've got a pretty solid UV map around the sides of the cylinder, but we would need to come in here and begin to sort of fix the UVs on the top and on the bottom of the cylinder. So um, in this lesson, we've learned about cylindrical mapping.